<laughs> Love you, baby. Love you. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting. This is a budget workshop meeting. Today is Tuesday, November 17th. If everyone would rise, I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. I hope so. <laughs> okay, tonight we have somewhat of a busy night compared to some of the other nights that we've had. And we've kept a pretty good course time wise here. Again, I want to remind everybody to keep order going around the table. Please raise your hand for questions, and the chair will acknowledge them. I want to do a roll call this evening. Um, for our secretary, so she knows who is here. Nick, I'll start with you on your end. Nick Bridal. Scott Blair. Mike Pierce. Uh, Mike, Sonny Crowder. <laughs> Jim O'Loughlin. Brian Lapham. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Stephen LeBranch. Jones. Mike Bluff. Chuck Rage. Jerry's on our here. Phil Bean. And I will point out that Mr. Rage is here as the precinct rep. Village district. And uh, the village district rep. Don't stop. Um, <laughs> For our secretary. Madam Chair. Don't make this a long meeting, please. May I, may I say something? <clears throat> oh, God. I wish to apologize to this committee, the Public and the Conservation Committee, for making statements at our last meeting Thursday on November 12th. I misspoke when I said I thought the, that the $90,000 warrant article to fix the Ice Pond Dam was for the entire project. I stated that I was surprised that 40000 had been allocated for the engineering costs from the Conservation <coughs> Fund. I apologize to this committee, the public, and the hardworking Conservation Committee for my lack of memory and any implications of their misleading the public and this board. The exact wording of the Warren article specifically spelled out that $40,000 would be spent for engineering from the Conservation Fund and that the $90,000 would be raised and appropriated. I am sincerely sorry for making any implication or allegation of wrongdoing. I hope the Conservation Commission will accept my most sincere apology. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. And um, now moving on to some correspondence, or lack thereof. Um, I do have something. You have um, your agenda and you have your consent agenda. And on the back, after Conservation Commission, or during the Conservation Commission um, discussion last week, we had, it was, I was pointed in the direction to request from Ellen Lavin the names of the funds and the actual balances, because last week no one really seemed to know uh, what those balances were. Uh, this second page uh, was what I, I, I talked to Ellen Lavin and asked her for the exact names of the funds and the balances so that we can clarify what the funds have been named and changed to. And that is what I received today. So I don't think that that fully answers the question. It raises more. <laughs> I mean, we had a, a problem whether it was one account or, or one fund or two funds. And now I see three, and they're all named account, not fun. But mm -hmm. and I never heard of salt marsh account. I don't know what that third one says. Does it say operating? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More, <coughs> more questions. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I'm sharing that with you. That's what I received. And we left here thinking there were two. She did say this is how she accounts for it in conservation, but what we were really looking for was the name of the funds. So basically we can follow along the funds, the Warren articles, funds in the budget, funds out of the budget. Um, but for your request last week, that is what I've received so far. On a second piece of correspondence, um, it has been pointed out or was pointed out to our newest member, Scott, uh, that his correspondence regarding the um, charts he's been sending out as an information only 
were inappropriate and in conflict with RSA 91. I would tell you that that information only, not anything regarding opinion, is just that, information only. And as long as, when we've covered this before, as long as no one responds, no one has an opinion, um, that information only goes out. He made no response on that. He sent it out as a spreadsheet. So I don't want to detract from anybody on this committee who's spending a lot of time creating this information for us and generating it out to us. Madam Chair, uh, first of all, I, you know, I looked at Scott's email and he sent it. I appreciate your work, Scott. Uh, and what I saw was Scott offering zero opinion and nothing more than delivering historic facts of government numbers available to the public. <coughs> Was it putting together in a cogent form for us to consume more easily? I cannot imagine anyone would interpret that as a violation of the law to share facts that are open to the public already. Okay. You see a uh, email here from the town manager within the hour of Scott sending this out, less than an hour after Scott sent this out. The town manager is, is telling Scott that his email violates the right to know law. Um, <laughs> there's no basis for that assertion, in my opinion. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to just clarify some things again. All right. <coughs> Information only, documents that, that are sent out. I would prefer that everybody send everything to me first. If it is something that can go out under 91A, we will send it. I'll disseminate it to everyone else. In another situation. If I may reclaim my time, Madam Chair. Uh, when I'm done. On another note, there have been some emails that did not go through me for the protocol. Now, the protocol is something that we agreed to. It is not an egregious error. It is just a protocol that we agreed to and that we will stick to. So that would clear an information only, especially in this particular case, with the new member do not consider um, in the situation of violating the RSA 91. Michael. <coughs> um, <coughs> I wasn't directly involved with this particular issue, but when someone puts forth the effort of putting together a spreadsheet, as we've seen, and somebody else comes along and criticizes, that presents a problem. I've always worked for open and honest government in this town, always. If anybody disagrees with that approach, they can file it someplace, okay? okay. Thank you. But and I, I'm just saying, though, that when you live in a glass house, uh -huh. you should not, not throw too many stones. Thank you, Michael. No, I'm sure. Tim? Is it or? Well, according to this email, the only time I'm allowed to express an opinion is at this committee meeting. So right. then, then please allow me to do so. <laughs> <clears throat> it is my opinion that Scott did uh, an excellent service uh, to this committee by, by providing that additional data, just as he did in his previous email when he provided us a number of historic, uh, multi-year historic information, all of which are part of government records already open to the public. By making them more readily available for us to consume, he has made our job more accurate and easier to do. And I am thankful for Scott doing that. And I hereby make a motion that this committee recognize that Scott's action was not a violation of 91A, but rather was a service to this entire committee. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Discussion on it? Yeah, I, I'd like to say well, I, I, I appreciated Scott's input. I didn't I didn't see any any implication of a solicitation. I didn't respond back because that would constitute could be seen as constituting a meeting. I took the information. I love information, so people send me information. I assimilate it and reach certain sediments based on that information. I saw that no way a violation of anything. 
Vote by the committee. Opposed? I abstain. I abstain. I didn't read it. I'm not, I can't uh, make a uh, motion. I'm you were part of the check. I understand that. Um, so the abstentions, Phil Bean and Chuck Rage. I'm saying that because a secretary can't always yeah. see the mm -hmm. entire table. We're a big group. And everyone else is in the positive, Jim? You too? Thank you. I, I have to say, and I've been here a long time, this committee this year I'm very proud of, to a person, this has been the most productive, involved committee that I've seen for a very long time. And I think it, it's almost depressing to discourage those who volunteer to run for offices in this town and spend their time. And, and you know what, Scott, I apologize because I know you wanted nothing made of this and you're new, and, but if there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. And this is how we need to disseminate our information. Otherwise, it'll all be done in this room and everybody will be complaining that we're here for five hours again over nothing because as we always have done, we've done our business in this room. So on that note, I'm going to end that. And I'm going to move on to a consent agenda. And the reason for the consent agenda is we have a few things, a few questions dangling out there. I'm going to go down the consent agenda, read them, and ask for a vote on this committee. But we're going, I'm going to ask that you approve these, hopefully, and send them off. Um, One vote on the answered. entire consent agenda, right? Um, I, I think there's normally that's how the board of selectmen does it. All right. Well, I know right, Phil. Pardon no, me, I, citizen. I think they do read them. One of the board of selectmen yeah, vote on its consent agenda in its entirety. Tim, I'm I'm more comfortable no. one at a time. Oh, they don't. Okay, oh, because do. and I say that because they go out in different directions. However, the theme remains the same. There are questions that to save remain time. open. They've been going back and forth through protocol to through the chair, and they're just dangling out there. And you know what? We're, get, we're, we're more than halfway at this point through the municipal budget. It's not municipal budget and warrant articles. But we have to start to wrap some of these questions up. So there is no intent other than to fill the holes for the things that are still out there. So I'll read the first one. The Budget Committee has resolved that a meeting as soon as possible with the DPW Director and the Budget Committee representatives at appropriate DPW locations to review operational procedures and asset status as well as informational discussions of any de deficiencies therein. Um, I should put a period. Thanks, guys. Budget Committee further appoints as its representatives in this matter Jerry Zanoy and Mike Pluff. There is a difference here from the subcommittee. We are appointing them. I'm asking that you appoint them as our representatives. Meeting details shall be initiated and coordinated by Jerry Sonoy directly with the DPW director. I am asking. I move that item. Do I have second. a second? Second. It's open for discussion, Madam Chair. It's open for discussion. Uh, what, it, what at this point is the benefit of a subcommittee? Um, this seems to cert totally circumvent that. This is not a subcommittee. I know, but at the beginning of uh, my term here, we're using the subcommittees <coughs> to establish uh, a, w a means and way to gather more information, and become quote unquote experts in certain fields. How does this differentiate from the subcommittee's responsibilities? Nick, my my response to you is that we've gone the subcommittee route, all right, on this. And it has been bogged down. It has been canceled. It has become a mess. Sending a representative of the Budget Committee, we are entitled under the RSAs. It is our right to gather information. We're doing, this is a direct link from this to that process. And remember what the end result is. The, between equipment and DPW, we're talking about a $10 million operation. To, and and, and I fully understand that. I just think it, and this is my personal opinion, it kind of nullifies the work that the other subcommittees have done, and I'm not, not speaking on behalf of my subcommittee. No, but we do have another subcommittee that has had a very large effect, has done very well with what it's done. Um, in this area with DPW, I feel the Budget Committee has to have 
direct access as by the statutes, and that's what I'm calling for in this article. It's not, uh, we're asking, I'm asking that we send two former selectmen who've worked long and hard, so we're not just sending anybody. This is just an information gathering so they can come back to us and give us some very sage advice on things that not everybody here may, be, may know. So is there any other discussion on this? The only issue I have is, why can't anyone go? I can answer that question if you want me to, Madam Chairman, sure. because Jerry Zanoa has been in that sewage treatment plant from top to bottom literally when I was a selectman. Mm -hmm. He should have got a badge of courage for that. And Mr. Plouffe knows vehicles better than know. anybody at this table. Mm -hmm. Anybody. That includes you, sir. This is not meant to be a tour. There was a tour with Mary Louise Woolsey. This is for fact-finding by what I would give our professionals that have been here, have held office, know what these things are about. They're not going to go in and they're gonna, not going to waste anybody's time. You okay with this, Mike? Sure, you okay with this? Oh, yeah. All right. We're fine. Anybody else before we take a vote? All right. All those in favor? Stay. Okay. Opposed? Nick? Sonny? Brian? And abstain. Mike? And Phil? I'm sorry, Jim, did you give a yes on that? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Um, so the motion passes. Can I have all the yeses again? Because I'm just going to say them just in case she didn't get it on camera because it was Thank a split you, vote in here. Um, that was affirmative from Jerry, from Chuck, from Tim, Stephen, Eileen, Jim, Mike, and Scott. Thank you. Moving on to the next one. The Budget Committee affirms the request to DRA sent on 10-20-2015 is vital to the Budget Committee's work and wishes to express that timing of this is of the essence in receiving the requested guidance. Budget Committee Chairman shall write a communication to DRA reflecting this affirmation. I'll move Th that item. Second. This is no brain. I was, I was just right. vote on it. Any discussion? What, what is the 1020 letter? I'm sorry. That was, that was, that was a couple of meetings that ago. That was the correspondence that has already been sent to DRA, was sent from the chair to DRA with some questions that we had. I passed it out to everyone. The problem is, is that DRA has not responded to us yet, and this would be just reaffirming it, but it would go th to them now as being voted on by the committee, not just the chairman. So as the committee, we're, we're requesting that. Right. Tim? I'm voting yes. Okay. What were some of the questions, Eileen? Can you remind people what we asked? Is that beyond the scope of this? Well, she could have finished it. We know. This isn't asking anything new, Jerry. Everybody has a copy of this. Okay. This isn't asking anything new. It's just asking that they respond to us, okay, okay? the questions that we've already asked in right. that correspondence. Okay. That was a letter on, on uh, 1020. So all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions. One abstention. Select and be. <coughs> Okay, third, the Budget Committee requests from the Town Manager a detailed explanation of the 2015 actual expenses under the contracted services in the assessing schedule to include description of property at issue, vendors employed for said property, and amount paid or committed to pay for said property. Simple information request. Yeah. Big deal. <coughs> I'll move number three. It's an area of confusion, and rather than go round any more with it, just making that Second. request. Discussion? No. All those in favor? Opposed? You're opposed? No. You're in favor? You abstain? Okay. Abstentions? Selectman Bean and Brian Lapham. Okay, number four. Budget Committee requests from Town Manager an explanation regarding the appearance of the 2015 employee health insurance being approximately 
$200,000 under budget. I'll move number four. Second. I'll second. Okay, no. Jerry. Jerry. Let's we'll see if you can second. All right, Steve will second. Yeah. Okay, All I'll right, second any discussion on that one? Again, just clarity. Simple information requests. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. And you're abstaining. Thank you. <laughs> Select them being abstains. And question five. Budget committee requests the following data on the undesignated fund balance. A, the 2014 audit results on the cash balance and receivable non-cash balance. And B, present data on the cash balance and receivable non-cash balance. I'll move number five. I'll second that. All those in favor? All right, discussion? Oh, okay. Uh, Selectman Bean, you're abstaining? Yes, ma'am. Mm, everybody else says yes. Number six, budget committee requests that the town treasurer appear on the December 1st, 2015 budget committee meeting to review the present fund status in the treasurer's custody, in particular those funds related to the Conservation Commission, as well as any question that may arise concerning the treasurer's activity and budget request. As you know, we had not requested that the treasurer come in this year, but I think based on some information that you have, we possibly do have some questions for her. So do I have? I will move that. A okay. second. Madam Chair, this is a... Uh this is basically another no-brainer, but uh, does it mean that you will be making the request directly to the town treasurer? Yes. Okay, great. I'm ready to vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Select B. Thank you very much. Well, the housekeeping is over. We can get on to business, maybe? Yes, we can. I'm Excellent. sorry to keep everybody. And first of all, um, I always hate to say, come on down, Diana. All right. We are on page 49 in OBS 20. I'm starting with Parks and Rec. Diana Martin is joining us. What was the page number again, then? 49. 49. 49. 49. And over this 20. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. What well, the beauties of getting old. I don't hear well, don't, <laughs> don't massage things very good anyway. Let's <laughs> move on. We're all here to help each other. Nice there you go. All right. As we've done with everyone, we've let the department heads go over their budget, point out their highlights, their highlights, their lowlights. And okay. <clears throat> so we're starting with Parks and Rec, right? So yes. Um, basically, if you look at it, my budget is the same as last year. What I do, though, is um, there are some items in the Parks Department that I buy every other year. So I looked back this year, and I looked back um, like three years, and I looked at where we were spending money and where it was a constant that we were either overspending or underspending, and I changed those figures to reflect what the real spending was over the past few years. And so that's one change that you'll see. And then the other change is, again, in the parks part, the grounds and fields. For example, every other year we buy the 5R, which is the ground surface for the playgrounds, because that's basically um, 
not an item that we have to buy every year. So some things <coughs> we didn't have to buy last year, or some things we bought last year, we're not buying this year, and we're buying the five bar this year instead. So that's why the figures are the same in the budget. It's just changing what we're purchasing. Mm. Okay. I have a question for you on lifeguards. Mm -hmm. In 2015, it's showing actual zero. Did we not have lifeguards? We did not have lifeguards. We only had one person apply for the job this year, and we have to have at least five to run the program. And lifeguards is a problem all around New England right now. Mm -hmm. Rye did not have enough lifeguards. In fact, I gave the one lifeguard that I had to them. They still didn't have enough lifeguards. They, have, um, they had signs up all summer in Massachusetts looking for lifeguards. The state just barely had enough lifeguards. I don't know what it is. It's not <coughs> Diana Martin. It's not the salary. It's people just don't want to be lifeguards. Is that a lot of people don't qualify? I mean, that's Boy, it's a pretty tough course. Yeah. I mean, I've taken the course <coughs> many years ago, but it's a pretty tough course. And it's a, hard, it's a hard job. I mean, it seems all glamorous. You're out there on the beach all day in the sun, but you've got to keep your eyes on the water. And watching the beach is harder than watching a pool. And it's a tough job. So I think um, everything is in a cyclical fashion. I'm sure that lifeguards will come back again, but the last couple of years has been a true struggle trying to get them. So I see that you've budgeted it, though, for 2016. Well, I want to have money in the budget if we can get lifeguards. <coughs> but it's kind of an all or nothing. We either have enough or you don't have enough. Correct. And it's better to post the beach as no lifeguard and not have the liability. Right. And that's what I did this year because I didn't have enough lifeguards. Did you get a lot of complaints? I didn't get any, actually. <coughs> Thank you for that information. Um, questions, Scott? Uh, on the part-time wages, um, you, you, you noted that the parks employees work less hours this season, so the year-to-date is low, because what it is, I annualized the year-to-date that, you know, came in uh, quite a bit under the, it came in at $54,000 versus the budget of 74000 So right. what wasn't, what didn't get done this year? Two, two things, two things happened. One, we had one of our part-time secretaries went out on leave, and it was two or three months that we were without a secretary. So there was some of that money right there. The other thing that happened is with the um, Affordable Care Act, we had to move our parks employees to part-time instead of seasonal where they had more hours. Mm. So that's the other part of why that line item is lower. <laughs> Michael. Back to the lifeguards real quick. Where do we put life logs? Do you have them? Do we have them down on the south side of the Hampton River? We have them at we have them at Sun Valley and Place Cove. Place Cove and so Sun. They both they're on the opposite ends of right of the main beach. Place Cove is that? What, where is that in relation to High Street? How far north is About that? A mile north. Yeah, it's not very far. Oh, is that that place where there's access from the? Mm -hmm. There's uh, a big there's a dirt there. parking lot there. Okay. It's right in the Beach and Highway. Okay, I know where it is now. Yep. And, you, and you have a stand or something for the lifeguard up there, too? We have lifeguard chairs at both the beaches. Okay. I wasn't, I'm not familiar with that little area, I guess. I picked up some debris off the ocean when you're helping somebody else with the Durham project, but I don't remember the layout. It's a long, that lies a very long beach. Sun Valley is much smaller. So you put just one lifeguard, in theory, if you have them in each place? I have three lifeguards at Place Cove. Like I said, it's really long, and we have all two at, at Sun Valley. <clears throat> Thank you. That's all I have. Anyone else? Jerry? Yeah. Hi, Di. Hi, Jerry. And that lifeguard thing is a problem, and you, you and I talked about that a little bit. It woke the UNH and uh, put some signs up and solicit some young people who could. How long does that course training last? Um, for the lifeguard. Honestly, I don't know. The I think it's given by the six right weeks six or something weeks. like that. And we could fund it, yeah. if you will, and then make them sign up that they'll be with us for a yeah, year. Yeah, I did. Well, I did ask at UNH. Yeah. And I had one, I had one inquiry, and they never came in. Hmm. You think that you know, get a tan and sun and I fresh know. air. I know. Okay. Um, 
I, I made a couple of notes here um, when I saw grounds and fields. I, I note your revenue from the beach parking that goes to, to you, Diane, Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. It's a total of 126000 Zero zero nine, uh, twenty percent of the total parking, which was six hundred thirty thousand four thirty seven. <coughs> so you're jumping ahead. Yeah. No, I, I'm not jumping not ahead. Not on the parking yet. I'm not talking. To, I'm talking okay. about grounds here. He's talking about the infrastructure. Fund. Right. Okay. So, and then the current revolver recreation fund account has a balance of one hundred and forty four four eighty two, up twenty twenty two percent from last year. So my question is this. With this revenue coming in from the beach of 126,000 plus, why why can't we make maintenance the skateboard park of five thousand dollars, the playground five bar for two, and the buildings for two for a total of nine, still leaving you at 117 oh oh nine? Why couldn't we do that? Why why do we have to ask the public and tax impact the public? when we have all that revenue pouring into you. Okay, I'm not sure what buildings you're talking about, but well, I know what you're talking about with the five bar and the skate. Well, in park. your grounds and the grounds and the, uh, um, fields account, it says buildings, 2000. I, I don't so know. So that's that. meaning the tuck building or something yeah, like that. It says building repairs, 2000. Right. So between the skateboard park of five, the building return the repairs of two and the five bar of two, I would just take that right off that 20% coming from the beach and, and still have 116,000 or there 117,000 left over to do whatever you want with it. But this business of impacting the taxpayer, when you have that revenue stream, bothers me. Here's, Maybe you can answer here's that. the answer to that question. Yeah, good. I have three budgets. One is the budget that you're looking at today. Yeah. And that basically is parks and us and any office stuff. Yeah. The, the staff. Office. The infrastructure fund is a fund that is built that you can use it only for infrastructure. You can only build things with it, like the tennis courts. We built tennis courts. We built the inline hockey rink. Um, if I wanted to build a skateboard park or add some new equipment to the skateboard park as a part of a building project, I could use the infrastructure fund for that. I can't, you do, you not supposed to use that for repairs. Repairs is something that comes out of the parking, out of the parks and rec budget that you're looking at today. The other fund is the revolving fund, which is for the purpose of programs for recreation only. And only, I can only spend money out of that for programming purposes. Where is the infrastructure fund listed? It's on the bottom I'm, of the sheet. Uh, okay, you're right. And that's the one that gets the 20% from whatever we make in the parking lot. And the balance year. as of September of this year is 240428 I'm not sure what the balance is. I guess. It says. Yeah, the number's right. No. Now, is this a matter of definition? I mean, you know, I define this to be an infrastructure fund. That's what was voted on. As opposed to right, it's it's not a, it's not Diana Martin making it up. I'm right. going by the law. It's the Warren article. Yeah. So what 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 is your plan on this two hundred forty thousand four hundred twenty eight? Do you have one? Well, I have a warrant article out there right now for a new playground and yeah. for a, a playground truck. upgrades and truck and a truck. Yeah. I think and a truck. Was. Yeah. And I still have some money outstanding from this year from two of the items that I haven't been able to get bids on. And so I don't want to bring it down to zero. I want to keep money in there for future things and to build a little. So this was, act, this was a warrant article that created this fund. infrastructure fund? Yep, I think in 2007. Uh, I think was the okay. year. Before, before annoying, I guess. Mm -hmm. I just want to make a comment, Jerry. If, if, if that fund builds up and there's a major thing that we want to build, a new community center, <laughs> a, a something, and all of a sudden we have yeah. a half a million dollars in that account, we yeah. can use it to that. Yeah. If you keep taking money out of that account for 5000 here, 3000 there, it's never going to build up. So well, I, I think, I think I it's smart I, to, yeah. to build it up. Um, okay. And, uh, okay, we're still in parks and rec, Di. Yep. Holiday decorations. You budgeted 2000 for 15 and haven't spent anything year to date. Is that because we 
haven't gone through Christmas yet or something? Or no, you, well. And you budgeted again another 2000 for 16. so right. please explain that. I buy, the, you know the big snowflakes that are up in the town? Yeah. And also, we also have little um, bows and things like that down in the gazebo area. Every year I put in $2,000 for that to, to replace some of the lights. However, in the last two years, our budget's gotten so thin toward the end of the year, I was told not to spend the money. So you didn't spend anything this so year? I didn't spend it this year. I didn't buy any new ones, but I'm hoping to get some next year because I don't know if you've looked at them last year, but a couple of them are looking. Yeah. Diana, how many of the originals? They're mostly all originals. I think I've only had a chance to buy six new ones since yeah. I've been putting the money in the budget. So there's 20 of them, originals. Those were donated. Yeah, those were done. Weren't those done at DPW? No, no, no. We, um, we purchased them. But the fire department and our department put all the lights on them. Yeah. So we got them at a, a lower cost price. It was price. a big work effort. That was it very was low budget when she a lot did of it work, yeah. forever ago. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the fact that we don't spend $2,000 on a downtown Christmas time I would think is, that, is uh, terrible. I would think that yeah. maybe come December, somewhere the second week in December, maybe... Uh, Fred will have a lot more visibility about, you know, where he's going to end up end of the year, and maybe you'll get a green light and be able to buy these things, so he'll be ready. For next year, yeah. Hey, you're buying for this year. Well, they got to be up by the Christmas parade, December 5th. Oh. oh. <laughs> tree lighting. They, they turn on at the tree lighting on the 4th. Well, maybe on the 4th, Fred will give you, you can buy it. Oh, dear. All right. Okay. I, uh, I was going to go into uh, administration, but you want to... Well, administration is okay. Just don't go into parking yet. <laughs> All right, okay. Then I got, uh, um, I didn't see any, um, the Revolver Recreation Fund mm -hmm. does not show any withdrawals from that fund for gas and or supplies. So. Because those don't go under the programs. You don't need any supplies for program? Yeah, but we we do, but they come out of the revolving fund. I don't have any park supplies don't come out of that. That comes out of grounds and fields, which is the budget that you're looking at tonight. Now this this revolver fund here. Yeah, yep. the, the recreation fund has no gas taken out of it for this year and no supplies at all for this recreation and I, and I gotta believe you're using supplies to, to support this recreation fund. I'm not sure what you're looking at but we do. Miscellaneous supplies and expense. Uh, well, why not? Right, anyway. What page you on? Right here tonight. Because it all comes out of that one line that's program expenses. Oh, where? Where is that? That is about one, two, three, oh, four, Oh, it's five. on the program expenses? Yeah. That's where all of that comes out of. And gas, too? <laughs> There's no gas in the program, in that revolver. That comes out of the parks budget. But isn't the parks budget uh, taxpayer impacted? Correct, but we use gas in our trucks and our lawnmowers and our bucket truck. So you're using them generically. You're not using them necessarily for particular activities going on within the recreation fund. No, because what comes out of that is things like the Easter egg dig or um, skiing trips and stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Motor vehicle allowance up by five hundred dollars to twenty five hundred. Seems high to me with today's gas prices. Well, I did the budget six months ago. And truthfully, I get a stipend every month, and the rest of that money goes to any of the employees, other employees that need to use their car. And I'm yes. going to be honest with you, Renee hasn't filed in as much money as he should have this year. Yeah. He's, so I told him he's got to get on it. So I put the extra money in that line item to make sure that we cover that for him because he makes a lot of trips in his own vehicle. Uh, one other question, Di. Mm -hmm. 
And this is, I'm not picking on the money here, okay. necessarily. Overtime wages, $5,000. Well. The rationale in the book that I look at, we'll arrive at my settlement, says, up because the spending is up. I don't know if that's the exact right well, wording. Well, that's what it I, says. I went back and looked at how we've been using the over, how much overtime's been spent the last few years, and I just adjusted it to be correct to how it's been working. My only point here, Di, is I would have asked, why is the spending up? Give me some, give, give me some reasons as to why the spending. It's not up. actually up. That's why I say I don't think that's the right wording. Maybe I, maybe I put in wrong wording. But if you look at the last few years, yeah, it's always been higher than what was budgeted. So I just changed the blind item to reflect what is actually being spent. Um. That line item was cut one year, and we still overspent it. So that was uh, I'm trying to. Yeah. 2014 was 5100, and before that 3400, 2100, 2600. So yeah. 14 is when it spiked up, and we're holding it there. Yeah, I did see a series of those numbers. That's why when I looked back on it, uh, trying to find my notes here on my whole pages, is uh, full of scribbles. But uh, it looked like you did take a step up, to your point, right, Scott, 14? 14 has stepped up, and, and so she's budgeting $200 under that. But, yeah, uh, but for 12, 11, 12, and 13? Yeah, it was lower, 2,600, 2,100, and 3,400, so big so increase in one year. Right. Well, the moving up can only be because we're expanding our programs and stuff like that. And again, most of that overtime is Renee because he's working extra hours then to get all the programs done <clears throat> that's all I have okay <clears throat> anyone else I do have Brian. just following up on that last year you only requested 1500 for what 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 for administrative um, overtime well I requested more and got cut and that was no way near enough this year Obviously not. Yeah, <laughs> we spent I just want to make 000. it clear for everybody. <laughs> um, the only other problem, or I don't think it's a problem, problem. I hope it's not, um, is when these people are using their own cars, mm -hmm. whose insurance are they under? I guess I would say they're not, they're not carting, um, they're not driving around participants or anything. Renee's going to Tuck Field. Renee and I are going to. But uh, if she's working for you when she's on a task. She's a he. he sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's working for us when he's going over to the park or when he has, you know, if we go to a workshop or a conference or something. He has I to just know it's in some other areas have had a problem with this. Um, I just want to make sure. That's all. Yeah. I, well, we all if have you don't insurance. think it's a problem, yeah. either will I. Thank you. Okay. Oops, me. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Thank can you, Dave. Can I oh, just ask? Sorry to yeah. um, the lifeguards. Getting back to that, I'm sure you have. But have you looked at what the other areas of pain? It just seems so low, ten dollars an hour to. Ask they're someone all, to do that job. They're all about the same, although I did talk with the Rye this year, and they, because they couldn't find lifeguards, they were able to, they jacked up their salaries and still couldn't find lifeguards. And they still couldn't find someone. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. Okay. It is a problem. What was the training cost for the lifeguards? Well, I don't know, but when I took it like 15 years ago, it was like $400. And you said you've tried offering potential lifeguards the training as part of the package. No, and I, to be quite honest with you, I'm kind of against that because why should I spend $400 for someone to be a lifeguard and then have them say, you know what, I decided to go work for the state instead. Yeah. Well, that's true, but we, we do a similar activity in the police department with our summer specials. We uh, get them all trained and they can leave probably almost as soon as they get here, right? 
the, the police uh in this case they'd be with the state next week because the state pays a lot more than we do yeah, i don't know not if it's really a lot enough. it's not a lot more i don't even know that it is more anymore last time i checked we had about the same salaries but but it could easily happen and i think that working for the state's a little more glamorous so does anybody else pay for the training not that i know of yeah I thought maybe a sign of might be a good idea. Your training and then you got to stay yeah. with us for a year. Well, for a year, yeah. Get a bonus at the end of the uh, seafood festival right. if they stay, right. which is the equivalent of the training. Yeah. yeah. Key word though is having people want to do it. Yeah. Right. Did you ever put an ad in the paper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually ran for two months. <laughs> what, what, pa what paper did you put it in? Die. It's awful. Hampton yeah. Union, and it's I think easy. it went to the it Manchester Union. Mm. Well, I'm just going to tell you that the kids nowadays do not read the paper. So there's got to be a oh, it was on, it was social on, media. It was on Facebook. I beg to differ, well. sir. I still consider myself a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I it was on Facebook as well, and it went to you and H. Tim? Good evening, Diane. Hi. Diana. Sorry. Diana, yeah. Uh, thank you for the 2007 reference. I think it was Article 44, which is in front of me now. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, construction or reconstruction of recreation infrastructure within the town. Right? That's the restriction. And I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, maybe that fund might be uh, brought a bit up to date to be a bit more flexible. I mean, I'd like your opinion on that. I mean, one example would be that strikes my mind is we got $18,000 in a budget set aside for lifeguards, and last year we didn't spend it. This coming year we might not spend it. Um, but still, if you find the lifeguards, you want to have the money available to spend right. it. Yeah. So if you could use the money in this fund, for example, for lifeguards, should you find them, then we wouldn't have to put it in the budget. And if it wasn't being used, then it would simply stay in the fund. Uh, and I think this fund might be re-looked at in terms of making it a bit more flexible in terms of its usage. I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, truthfully... I'm not opposed to what you're saying, but I don't know how to do that. I mean, a, a resident of the town put that in, and that's the Charlie legal Preston, wording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the legal wording. So I don't know if... Oh, another Warren article can change the... Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, would you consider that a uh, good thing to do from, from your department's point of view? Can we consider it's tough because it still gets voted on. Well, it may or may not be. It's not necessarily. We could be. We could be. Uh, we we stated to say something along the lines of broader usage, and the withdrawals could be um, not necessarily requiring a town vote unless it exceeds a certain percentage or something like that. Mm -hmm. So there could be additional flexibility in terms of taking it out. I do see your point. Is you have to wait a whole year for town meeting to vote right. for it. What's what's the point? Right. Yeah. But there is flexibility that we could incorporate if the town meeting were uh, so disposed and encouraged to do so. Right. Would that be something that would help your operations? I don't. I'm not sure because I would have to. I guess I'm. I would have to live Think through about it. it a bit. You know, I'd have to live through it because, truthfully, right now there's no muddy waters. I can. I can do this with this fund. I can do this with this fund, and this is what I can do with the budget. So I. It's square, and I'm, I know what I'm doing. So I don't know if we make it more flexible, if that raises more questions on different things that we could purchase or what. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Something we'd have to give more thought to, yeah, basically. Yeah, because there's okay. a lot, I mean, there's that's, a lot of gray areas that could come up yeah. in doing yeah. that. I would encourage you to explore possibilities that it might be uh, more advantageous for your department in the town mm -hmm. to maybe incorporate some flexibility in that. Um, and, and generate a discussion with the appropriate people on the matter. Just a thought. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time. Diana, at what point do you decide to cut bait on the program? What month? You? On the lifeguards? Yeah. Well, I wanted to have lifeguards out there as a <coughs> Memorial Day weekend. And so far, the last at least four years, I haven't been able to get them out there because they're in college or, you know, high school or whatever, they couldn't get out there until almost July 3rd. So this year it was probably the first or second week in June that I said, mm -hmm. I, I gotta make decisions on this because I have no one to do this. And I gotta make plans if we're not gonna have life Right, out from there. a budget standpoint, it leaves, to me it leaves us in a dilemma because we didn't have them this year 
do you know if you'll have them next year? And of course, we have to look at whether or not to fund <coughs> that. And then, as in the case this year, where you didn't have them, that 18000 rolls into the general fund. Mm -hmm. But your mid-year in your recreation budget, and obviously you've gotten to the end of this year and you've got requests going into next year, there's no way to do it um, on our part, but it almost wouldn't feel as bad giving you the funding for the 18000 And if you were not able to fill that, be able to use that 18000 for other things that you didn't budget for by the end of next year. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great. But, but that, I don't know how you There's do no that. way f for us to do that. Right. That has to do with the town. But on uh, something that specific where we would have to, we would hate not to budget, not give you the 18000 Me. Right. I'll, I'll talk for me. I would hate not to vote to approve that 18000 or right. take that out of your budget because then there would be no possibility of lifeguards. Correct. But on the other side, $18,000 just to end up nowhere um, to recreation's advantage by the end of next year when mid-year out you already know whether or not you're going to go forward with the program. Right. Everybody know? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I kind of see your point because it's like if we don't have lifeguards this year but we still can't buy replacement <coughs> Christmas lights. Yeah, Christmas lights. It's like, well, we didn't have lifeguards this year, so why can't we use some of that lifeguard money well, to yeah, that's replace the light I mean, or something to that something extent? Something to that yeah. effect. I mean, I'm, I'm sure knowing Diana through all the years, there's always something that is needed. Always, I mean, yeah. we don't have the most gorgeous parks in the world. I hate to tell you, I'm sorry. We're the best equipped. And usually it's a lack of funding. But she gets stuck because it's an all or nothing program where you're going to be stuck based on this year you might be inclined to say no but then that totally takes the program out but then if you vote for it you may be just rolling that 18,000 back in so not to be redundant it would be nice and I'm saying it publicly if that money if w that money is put into the budget for you and if a program can't be done that it would be still to the advantage of let's say your discretion for things that you need right. within parks um, and it may just be Christmas lights although right. there's two thousand dollars in Christmas lights knowing how those came about in the condition that they're all in I don't know why we're not earmarking that because it's a very small amount of money for the downtown and quite honestly we just it, it's a funny thing we, the walkway was just put in um, and it changed the whole feeling of walking from the parking lot to the downtown businesses. So, you know, something sometimes as simple as $2,000 on Christmas lights can certainly brighten things up. Yeah, Jerry. To your point, Eileen. Yeah. 5000 for the skateboard park, 2000 for the uh, fly bar in the playground, and 2000 for the buildings. That's $9,000 that could be used. If the 18 for the lifeguards weren't used. We wouldn't be seeing that. That's Nine exactly there, my plus point. your Christmas lights for two. You know, but again, the town manager and the board of selectmen have to decide the priorities. I just, it's right. something that we don't have any control over. I'm not suggesting that we do or would. I'm just throwing it out there as maybe a sensible thought right. for next year. Right, Michael? and I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that would do that, so I would have to talk with the town manager and yeah. the selectmen about that. That would be between you guys, but I think it's... It, while it seems that all we look to do is take things away, mm -hmm. in this case, I think we want to give you the tools that you need, but we want to see them utilized in some way for recreation. So Michael. when during the summer do you decide your lifeguards, are, you're not going to be able to use them because you can't you get inside? That. That's the middle of June? Right, that's what I did this year. What we ought to do on that line item is say, lifeguards until mid-June, and then after that, recreation department director's discretion. Just change the name of the line item. That's up to your town manager, though. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to leave that for the yeah, town manager to think about. Yeah. <laughs> I think we we made our point. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But isn't she in charge of that general line item? Can move uh, items from one sub line to when another it, as it, she wishes? When it comes to that, approval? I think that's okay. between her and the, so and the town manager. The town I want to stay yeah, out of that right, discussion. Exactly. Right, it's kind of earmarked for lifeguards. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Because then everybody would be moving everything around, and we don't really want that either. I'm just right. picking this specific item because it's an all or nothing. And it has a date, six months, seven months into the future. I do understand, Madam Chair. I don't just, have an answer. Maybe I'm confused, but I thought a person that was in charge of a line item is in charge of all the sub-line items, and within that context can move things around. Well, she can request that of the town manager, but it's... Fred, is that correct? I, I don't. I don't. That's, that's, she can that's, request movement of one item, one subline. Sub I yeah, subline yeah. item to you another mean sub. To another subline item. Yeah. yeah. No. She can't. She can't. We so don't do that. What we happens don't do is that. when you want to purchase something, you 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 earmark it under the line item it goes to. So we know that it was purchased under the right line item. Nothing's purchased from some other line item. That's what pays for it. But you have any questions that no, you use that material <laughs> Otherwise, everything will get moved everywhere. Yeah. So what happens? I understand that. So what happens to the money at the end of the year? She doesn't spend the eight years. Right. Doesn't get it uh, back. Back to the, oh, goes back to the back to the taxpayers. Oh, you don't spend it for something else in your department? No. no. Not unless you can't spend it twice. That's yeah. why it's still there. So that there's clarity when you overspend a line. Yes. A subline. And you need, or a subline, and you need more money to fund that line. Where does that? What is the process on that one? Go through the budget process. You need more money on a line item when it comes to budget time, you ask for it. If it's approved, it's approved. If not, it's not. It's, it's a pretty well locked out system. Well, going back to snow removal, I mean, obviously, this year we had more snow removal um, than was needed, than was budgeted for, and money had to be moved around. and. The money wasn't moved, it was charged to the appropriate line item. Other line items weren't spent to make up for it. Right. right. The department was looked at as right. a department. Which is the we same move. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Eileen, think think of the fact that if we did that, the eighteen thousand line item for lifeguards would look like ten thousand was spent this year. Yeah, no, and I'm not, it really wasn't spent for lifeguards. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not looking to like I said, this is a very specific a very specific line. Yeah. Um, very detailed and focused line. Yeah, exactly. I'm not for moving lines around. Um, I just think this is a very specific item. That isn't cheap. $18,000 is not a cheap piece. Um, no. So um, in Sun Valley, one last thing, and then I've killed this, this one. In Sun Valley, is there any way to enlist Seabrook for coverage on the beach over there? I don't, they don't have a lifeguard, they don't have lifeguard on that particular stretch of beach at all. So I guess the answer is no. Okay. For, for, for now, anyway. Last, last year, and the yeah. answer was well, no. Things change. Are we well signed in those beaches, mm -hmm. Sun, Sun Valley tells, and place? Yeah. We, well, so there are no lifeguards, so no lifeguards on duty. Right. So Swim we at have, your own risk or something? Right. We have signs at both of the beaches that tell the hours that the lifeguards are actually there on the years that they're there. And then we have sign, no lifeguard on duty, swim at your own risk type thing when they're not there. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we've killed recreation if we want to go next to parking lot revenue. And that's OBS 37. OBS what? 37. 37. Oh, I'm sorry, 37, not OBS. OBS 13? Nope. No, just page, page 13. 13. That's the actual budget. And OBS, OBS 7. Thank you. OBS 7 and page 13. Thank you. Did I get 36? Oh. Because I <laughs> OBS, I said. Thanks, Brian. I said Sorry. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. A lot of money coming in. <laughs> yeah. 
good work there. Have a good year. I know. Yeah, Unbelievable. <laughs> I know. The weather gods will. I think we've already got. Uh, when are you going to have your new lot open? It's been open. Oh, already? Mm -hmm. You have a winter rental? No. no. So, any changes that you'll see on this is um, the lease. It goes up $1,000 every year at Church Street. And there was an adjustment in um, the lot supervisor's pay this year. And again, the only thing I did change was to go with a true figure was the water. Well, you didn't have bathrooms before, right? Correct. <laughs> well, I had two. <laughs> we won't go through that debate again. Uh, Diana, a question on that. When did the lots actually open? I mean, we had so much snow. We lost all that early spring that we had the year before. I don't know the answer that. to that off the top of my head, Eileen, but um, if we, we're kind of progressive about it now, and if we find that there's a nice Sunday, a sunny day that's coming up, yeah, we'll open up one of the lots, pending we have the money to start up. So I think we started... And also concerts. Concerts is the other thing. We'll open up the um, Ashworth Bath parking lot mm -hmm. if there are concerts. So I think um, our first concert this year was in April. So we <coughs> opened up early. I think they're going even earlier, Chuck, this year? Going later. Mm -hmm. Later? later. Yeah, they're in the last concert's this weekend, actually. Yeah. Which no, I mean earlier in, to, in 2016. Yeah, they've already got some. Yeah, books. the season's definitely expanded over the last three or four years. So... Hopefully we'll see a healthy, even healthier season. Yeah. Having snow on the ground till May didn't help a lot. No. <laughs> um, Tim? Supplies and expenses. Mm -hmm. um, 2014 actuals was 7.3 thousand. Through September 30th this year, it's uh, 4.9 thousand. But you're only budgeting for 2.1 thousand. Both of those items, I believe, are because of, uh, I don't have a brain cloud. Um, signs. Uh, so they were for, for signs, signs, but they were, um, what am I trying to come up with? Um, encumbered money. They were encumbered money so that I could purchase a sign from the previous year. So what you're looking at, supplies and expenses usually runs us around $2,000 somewhere in there. So what you're looking at is a figure that includes what we purchased, toilet papers, tickets, stuff like that, plus encumbered money that we purchased the parking lot signs with. And encumbered money gets applied to the year from which it was encumbered, not the year it was actually expended. Is that correct? No. No. Encumbrance is a carry forward to the year in which they are spent. On the actuals. So those are the okay. for the new. If you look at your financial statement that you receive every month. You'll see the encumbrance listed, the new appropriation, and the amount available. Okay, thank you for that clarification. So this, in, these encumbrances, we had encumbrances in 2014, something around five thousand dollars that came from the 2013 money. Apparently, right. that means you had five thousand dollars from 2013. Five thousand or more. I might have. And then likewise for 2015 this year, uh, we got close to $5,000 up to September 30. And you know why that happens? But because your budgeted, of weather. But your budgeted 2100 mm -hmm. And you're saying more than half of that was actually encumbered from 2014? say yes to that okay. all right because, fair enough because <laughs> how it works is if the weather's bad people don't work so like chuck was just saying this particular year fabulous weather people worked all year people worked the whole season there weren't very many rain days shutting down of the, of the lots so when you see extra money in that budget at the end of the year it's usually salaries 
Yeah, but this is a supplies and expenses line. Well, we've never had more than twenty-one hundred dollars, so they they carried forward from fourteen three thousand eight hundred and seventy-nine dollars. I'm assuming that must be for the sign that you're referring to, Diana. Correct. But that was the encumbrance from um, 2014 into 15. Okay. I don't have the stuff for 13, so I can't say what portion of that 7,000 was encumbered. I don't know. I don't have it down here. And honestly, I just don't remember back that far. I haven't had time with last weekend. I, I just find it odd to see a large expenditure and a small budget amount. And it just sticks out at me as, uh, are we budgeting enough? Yeah, it's, no, it's just a, like a one-time. I had to replace the signs because they were But this seems to be something that's happened two years in a row. That's, that's right, I replaced two of the signs in 2013, and I replaced the Church Street one this year. So you're paying for signs out of the supplies and expenses? Yes. If you take the $3,879 <coughs> off of the 4930 that's been spent, she spent $1,051. Yeah. Above and beyond that encumbrance, assuming the encumbrance has been expended, I don't have my first order list down here, but I think it has. And we would usually buy some more supplies for next year. Or more signs. Or we don't need any more signs now. <laughs> but um, actually, we do just the smaller signs. But we were told not to spend any money, so we're keeping. These signs you put in the ground. The ones that I'm talking about that we purchased are the. If you go down on Ashworth Avenue, look at the big signs that are up there. The big white signs that are at Ashworth and Island Path. I don't look at signs. Well, they're in the gr they're in the air, but we do have smaller signs that we put on the buildings, telling people open, how close. To, That's why you're yeah. only doing right. anything. So, so right. they're fixed. Right. Okay. Thank you. Give me a sign, Lord. All right, Stephen. Signs, signs everywhere. Signs. So, question. <laughs> I have a question I have for you, Diana. Mm -hmm. Your supervisor. Um, goes around and collects the money, makes deposits. I don't see any, and I know he's using his own vehicle, no doubt. Is that correct? Yep. I don't see any. Um, that's part of this, that's part of this payment using. Supply and expense. Yep. That's where his gas mileage goes. No, it comes out of his wage thing. That's part of it. That's been there since day oh, one. Okay. That was part of the. Okay, you just include it with his wages. Right, that was part of the contract with him. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. That yep. answers it completely. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? I think we're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you. Have a good rest of the night. Thank you. You too. All right. We're going to move on to the library. Good night. Good night. Good evening, Amanda. How are you? Doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm oh, doing well. Could Page you 53. Do me a favor and identify yourself. <coughs> What's your title? Like I said, we have a new secretary. She doesn't see you too often. I am Amanda Reynolds Cooper. I'm the director of the Lane Memorial Library here in Hampton. Thank you very much. And let's see, we are page 53 in OBS 21. Mm, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, we're going to turn the budget over to you. Why don't you go over it for us? Sure. It's not a lot there. No, <laughs> we I know. tried to keep it. <laughs> Maybe Try to keep it simple. Oh, noted. <laughs> the goal was actually presented to bring a one, a zero percent um, the, uh, health insurance surprise kept us from doing that, but we still have a really very modest increase here. Um, there's a change in part-time wages, a very small amount, and that's just we're adding a few more of those hours where we want double coverage at our front desk rather than just a single person working. Doesn't amount to much. Um, there's a new line that you haven't seen before, the merit pool. The library had been compensating folks annually, changing their wages on a step program. We've retired that step program and now we're using a merit pool to award raises after their successful evaluations. 
um, the line that's called it's like sick leave and vacation. That's what we use for um, substitutes coming in, filling in folks. I've increased that line. We've overspent it or come very close to overspending it several times in the past few years, so we needed to bump that number up. Our health insurance is still down. You've got modest changes for Social Security, Medicare, retirement. Within our operating or our, or our appropriation, there were three large reductions that we were able to affect without changing the service that we're offering. Um, the periodicals, the magazines that we're stocking, um, we were able to negotiate better prices, purchasing those for less, and so there's a $2,000 reduction there. Reference books, and you've got a lot of a shift in focus from buying a bound encyclopedia or a dictionary and shifting that over to, to nonfiction books. So you've got a $2,200 reduction there. And the last reduction in the, in the appropriation is in the online subscription, uh, uh, online subscriptions, and that's um, databases, the um, Morningstar, Reference USA, things where people can dial in from their computer and look up various reference materials. And that, um, again, same, we have the same offerings, but we were able to negotiate better prices, so there's a $2,000 reduction there. Each of those reductions really just shifted into other locations. As I said, with the reference books, it's now nonfiction. We needed more money for um, utilities because of the uh, rate change in electric. And overall, you have just the 0.94% increase for 2016. Could you go over the merit pay one more time for me? Sure. Um, we had adopted, and I want to say it was 2006, 2007, a step program so that each year of successful employment, you would advance a step on, the, on this pay scale that we created. At this point, um, that system has been completely retired. We were, I budgeted enough money to award as much as 2.25% for any individual employee and put it together as one big bundle. They'll have their annual evalu evaluations in January and we would determine their wages after the March meeting for 2016. Open it up. Uh, how you doing, Mr. Roman? Hi, Nick. Uh, I love the library over there. My wife loves it, too. A um, couple questions I had um, just to kind of clear things up for me. Computers and, and printers and stuff like that, do, do we have an inventory of everything that you guys have? Do you have it? Probably not. Do Is we it have available? It? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and replacing that, that, that computers after four years become paperweights. You guys are on some sort of schedule to kind of yes. update the systems? Bill Teshik is the assistant director and also the head of technical services. He has a complete inventory of all of our stock. He definitely has a plan <coughs> for everything, when it would rotate in, when it would rotate out. Also, um, allowance for when things break unexpectedly before their four-year life cycle is over. Okay. Um, again, wonderful job over there. The only other question I had was in regards to, um, and these questions stem from uh, me being on the IT subcommittee with the budget committee. Um, content for your website. Do you guys have a, a policy as to where the buck stops for who, you know, approves the content that's put on your website? An excellent question. I'm not sure that we do formally. The, the, the front page is created by all of us. It has welcoming information and basic, mm -hmm. um, you know, how to do, how-to how kind of explanations. Mm -hmm. The largest component to our website is probably our historical and genealogical information, and that's coming from, um, again, actually, Bill is the person who oversees that. Okay. It's... None of it's original content. Okay. We're, we're making digitally available a book or a magazine article or a photograph. I th we have a collection development policy that covers our print materials. Okay. I don't think it's there now, but I think it might be worth exploring the idea that we would include digital management in our collection development plan. All right. So something for, for us to think about in the future. That's a perfect answer for me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Michael, Ben Sunny. Yeah, hi. <laughs> We're going to go through the same story again. Why don't you explain what gross budget is? Sunny. What? Michael, then Sunny. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I thought you were waiting for me. Okay. 
That's okay. I don't mind. <clears throat> I, mean, I don't think I've ever been called Sonny. I've been called a lot of names, not Sonny. <laughs> anyway, how are you doing this evening? Hey, Mike, I'm good. I love picking on you. You're such an easy target. Um, <laughs> how many people actually work on your computers besides Bill? Work on them as far as if they break or if two. Who? Two. Two. Who's the other person? If I may? Miss Daryl Eifert. He's the head of public services. Oh, okay. And then uh, you answered the question, but you have a rotation plan. Do you know roughly what the rotation plan is for getting rid of old clunkers? I really don't. I, I assume it's probably similar to a three or a four year plan. Okay. And have you, are you thinking about going to Microsoft Office 365? Not something that we're currently discussing. Okay. Um, I know that you provide the links from the town website for committee members and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Who in your group can change the budget committee, for example? Bill? Everyone on the staff, actually all of the um, librarians have editing capabilities. We're using a Drupal website that makes it very easy for us all to be able to quickly correct a typo or grab a, mm -hmm. you know, a member's name off the budget committee if they, if the gear that they're election is up again, we happen to be put in wrong, we can all just change it. So we all have that capability. Well, I, the reason why I asked is because um, it came up to my attention oh, some time back about if there's some, something posted on a town website or a, a library or whatever, and if it's incorrect or erroneous, that entity might be sued to take it to court. Do you have a policy in place to cover those possibilities? I, can't, I think it's similar to, mm -hmm. to Nick's question, which is exactly. that we develop a plan for how we collect the material we put on the website. Absolutely. But um, with the things that we're hosting, most of them are historical items that we're transcribing word for word, and they're also and there's no element of copyright or concern there. We make sure that we have permission before we put it on. Right. The Hampton Union articles are the ones that we share are the ones that we've been expressly given permission to share. Okay. So you have they, Hampton Union has always given it. I think they've been giving you that permission for years, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other paper give you that permission? I want to say we have some of the Seaco scene and Atlantic News articles from various years. Okay. Because I know you have all the newspapers. I didn't know how what you had on the computer system. Um, so looking at the um, pic big picture of your computer replacement so forth, do you, do you work with the schools or the town like pooling a, a source of PCs if they're all a good price? We purchase used materials often. Mm -hmm. um, we're able to use, um, I'm not going to remember it, but through the state library, there's a technology d developing librarian there who can help you to do purchasing through other government entities so that you're getting it at a reduced cost. I'm not really familiar with the ins well, and outs. Well, I know outs, when I talked to Bill one time, he said he would uh, purchase some that ref refurbished. Mm -hmm. like brand new Dells that had something wrong and they fixed it, Dell company did. You get a little good price on those, which I thought was very smart. But I was just curious if you had a general plan or you just sort of play it by what money's available and where you can get them. Is that basically the, what you do? So I, like mean, it's, I mean, it's not dissimilar from the paper and the pens that we buy. Where's the good price now exactly. and we're ready to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Sunny. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, why don't you explain to the budget committee your understanding what a gross budget is? Sure. So we have money that's given to us through tax appropriation. We also have money that's in generated by our income generating equipment. We are intended through the RSAs to create a budget that reflects all of that money and how we plan to spend it. Um, the RSA says that the citizens are meant to approve that gross budget. I don't know of a mechanism within the town of Hamden to which to do that. I turn in a gross budget and there's nothing more to do with it. It doesn't fit in this booklet. It doesn't, because it's not all tax money, the, it would be separate from any sort of warrant article on, the, on just the budget and it doesn't go any farther than my turning one in. Okay. Uh, you recall I was a trustee for a number of years I and I went do. to the New Hampshire Library Trustees Association mm -hmm. and every year for three years Terry Knowles, the Assistant Attorney General of the State, would come and do a PowerPoint presentation. And this is a copy of the presentation. One of the slides is gross budgeting required. 
gross budgeting is required by RSA 32.5, Section 3. The definition, all appropriations recommended shall be stipulated on a gross basis, showing anticipated revenues from all sources, including grants, gifts, requests, and bond issues, which shall be shown as offsetting revenues to appropriations affected. Revenues to be shown <coughs> are anticipated revenues from fine and donation. My point is, you're spending money from the citizens' account, right? How much money did you spend this year? Mm -hmm. Th that's the non-appropriated money. That's not the tax money. That's Correct. money from mm -hmm. other sources. Mm -hmm. other sources. Mm -hmm. This year we have spent $18,486. Okay. And you also have a Vanguard account, right? Yes. What are the balances in that? $112,389. Okay. That's basically what gross budgeting would be, right? Why don't you disclose it? I do. Why not? <laughs> we go through this every year. Please, you're a member of the Budget Committee. If you have a way to introduce gross budgeting on the town level within this booklet, do so. I turn one in every August since you raised it as a trustee. This is what the Assistant Attorney General says in Article 3 requires every department of the town to disclose all their income and all their spending. I do not disagree with you. Then, the, then it's the question that your board of trustees have to de tell you to provide a gross budget. Because if you recall, I went to, after I went to the first workshop, I went to the Stratum Library, I went to the Portsmouth Library, I went to the Seabrook Library, and I went to the Exeter Library. And every library that I went to says they do gross budgeting. Hampton under the chair of the trustees, says you don't have to do gross budgeting. The RSA says you should. What's the problem with disclosing to the town what you are actually are spending? I would be happy to share with you the gross budget spreadsheet that I provide every August. I have done one for the last four years. It's not something I'm missing. It's yeah, done. I, I'm well aware of that and because my, I get it Sonny, every... Is that a request you would like to make? I mean, that would end the discussion. I'm sorry. She what? says that she prepares that and it is available. Would you like her to provide that to the Yeah, committee? I think you should okay. provide it to the budget committee. Could we ask you for that? And I don't know if you have to clear that. Do you need to clear that with... Um, it's, it's something I've already submitted. I submit it every year, so it's... A, a prepared and embedded if you document. Could prepare, if you could send us a copy of that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Is that every year? That would be a public document. Anyone then. else now with the question? Once I prepared it and submitted it. <coughs> I do have one more question. Well, you, you can. Let's, you want to bounce yeah, back to him? Go okay, ahead. Michael. Are you, are you, you proposing Senator. any Warren articles this year, Amanda? No, I am not. Thank you. You keep wanting to go to Warren articles. No, no, no. <laughs> Jim? I don't have a question. I have a comment. I just, um, I really never get to to see you over there, but um, you and your staff do a great job over there. It, it's welcoming. Um, it's every, every time I go in there, and the, and the friends also that group. Uh, you guys just do a great job. It's a real asset. So it's really not a question. It's just a I'll comment that. that I wanted to make. It. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to. I saw Brian. Let's give everybody a first chance before. I'll oh, just. Did one you have your hand yes. Brian. Um, I just have. A couple of little simple things. Um, my first is a comment, and this is a prime example of when we add employees. And if you look through the insurances, and because it's a short list, you'll see over the last few years how that number has grown. Um, and that's not a knock on you. I'm, I'm just saying, just pointing out the fact that when we add employees and we add insurance, um, it makes quite a bit of a jump. Health insurance? Yes. We've had two years of reductions in health insurance. Well, I have, okay, 
sick leave is up three thousand dollars yes that's the line that we use to pay substitutes when they're coming in to fill in for somebody it's so you're not paying for a sick leave you're paying someone to come in yeah it's it's a terribly named line <laughs> yeah it's, it's not labeled what it really is Radio that lines. explains that one and after mm -hmm. that that was it that clarifies that thank you very much on this side going on the table Tim then Jerry yeah Good evening. Jim. Uh, okay. Then you mentioned the house insurance has gone down two years in a row. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me why? Last year, the estimate was much higher than the actual rate, and so that was the reduction. And the, also, um, I'm not going to get the year right. We had a full-time employee when they left. We change the jobs such that we had two part-time employees taking okay. up that. So, it's so that's the first one. The next one was an employee leaving who had a higher health insurance plan than the person who replaced them. So you have two years in a row where you're redu it's staff driven and then you have the year where our estimate was much higher than the actual. So it's basically headcount related. Um, I find it curious. I mean, you're, uh, you're a line item in the town budget, yet you're treated distinctly different from other line items in the town budget. And that produces a kind of curiosity. Like, for example, all the other labor costs, their health benefits, retirement benefits, all that are paid out of the personnel account. Yet I see those are actually the line, subline items inside of your account, very different than the rest of the town. Do you know why that is? I do. Um, the library appropriation is a lump sum from the town to the Board of Trustees to do with and expend fully as, as it has been defined for the purposes of funding the library. We have the option of employing a bookkeeper and doing our own payroll and negotiating our own insurance. At some point in the past, it was agreed that the town would manage that element for us, but it is still our appropriation separate from the town personnel costs. And this is the... LY dash appropriation for uh, two hundred and thirteen thousand four hundred and eighty two dollars that you're referring to? So that is round number six hundred thousand is different personnel things and then the two hundred thousand is everything else. Book money, database money, utilities, repairs. So that LY appropriation is just our day to day operation money. So this is this is kind of like an operational agreement in the town as to treat the library line item different than all the other line items, and it affords the library flexibility in, in expenditures. Is that My understanding right? is that the RSA affords us the ability to be. So this is done via RSA. Separate. Excellent, excellent. Do you happen to know that number? Two hundred two A. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I have more bedtime reading to do. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> Um, I do enjoy the library. It really helps me stay up to date on the Tom Warren articles from years past. Uh, I think it's not been as up to date recently, 2014, 2015. Uh, so maybe we could look into that, like you did in 2013 when I asked. So I appreciated that then. I'd appreciate it again. Okay. Uh, and I think that other members have exhausted all technical questions. So. I'm done, thank you. Jerry? Yeah. Uh, Amanda, the warrant article uh, that we passed in March of this year was for 126812 Yes. You have spent 23000 of that, or only 18% of it. Can you, give us a, can you give me a status or give us a status on I'd be that? glad to. Sure. Um, the warrant article was for two purposes. One was to recarpet the first floor of the library, right. and the other was for the fan coils and thermostats throughout right. the building. Exactly. Carpet was completed in May. And that's the cost that you're seeing that has already been expended. Right. The fan coils and thermostats are underway as we speak. And so when we get um, a month in or when completion gets nearer, I'm sure that we will be billed and, and, and pay appropriately. <laughs> I think we will have it spent this year. Is that what you're saying? We pr we might go into 2017, but we've got or 2016, excuse me. But the Warren article was not. It was not a not. It, was, it, yeah, was, it, was it wasn't a lasting guy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So you you got the uh, fan coils and thermostats underway. Then. They're underway. Yeah. This week. Uh, with the I don't have a problem with the uh, 
library appropriation at all. Uh, the, the, uh, the library itself, uh, question on Social Security, Medicare, and New Hampshire retirement accounts. Are those firm or estimated percentages in there? Firm. Firm, they're all firm. And the medical? It's firm. And dental? Yeah. 17%. Or is that an estimate? I believe that's firm. All set. Firm, right. I'm going to jump it in before I forget my train of thought on that. If that's firm, are they, do you have a different source of uh, provider than the town does? No. Same? Same. Thank you. I think we left the municipal insurance part of the town review open. We didn't, we didn't yeah, do I it. Yeah, I know. Okay. So the hurt changes are, as you said, mostly about headcount. Yeah. In terms of going down. But I mean, it suggests to me that the increase on the on the town side is also a headcount on the terms of going going up. Suggestive only. We'll have to look into that later. Mike, you had another question. Yeah, um, on this appropriation on OBS two, um, at least on the under library on the line item. Uh, 30, uh, 45, 501, 6,900 appropriation. It's about, it runs a little over 200,000. I see it's going to be somewhere around uh, uh, 230, uh, 235 or whatever. Usually you break, that's a breakdown of your actual expenses, right, for running the library, about 230 some dollars? Yes. 230 some thousand dollars, I mean. Uh, did you, I thought in years past you, uh, Provide us a little worksheet with uh, giving some of the details on that. Starting on page 51 at the bottom, you'll see the breakdown start. Page 51? forward a couple of pages. Mm -hmm. On that, Amanda, I see the breakdown, but I see that only as regarding um, requested budget for 2014 and 2015. Total. There's nothing now other than just a total. So I have no way of knowing. Um, what your actuals were for 2014? It's culture and recreation, not library. Okay. Culture and recreation is the whole section. I mean, oh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm mean seeing the breakdown of what the council, constitutes yeah. that last year's appropriation, which last year was. Um, I don't have a breakdown in categories on that, just to have a line that says last year's appropriation oh, totally for all the independent things. Um, I'd like to go back to the old format. Can you provide the accounting on that? Oh, we did. Well, no, there's a request. There's a request that makes up that $200,000 figure. It's the same. That's the same format that it's always been. If you receive there, it's the same that you've always gotten on that line. And it always has spent exact to the exact amount. If you look back at um, an OBS two, the actual is two twelve three forty five. So you're telling me that whatever was requested, it was the actual in the end. Yep. That all that amount. That that. Well, amount. I don't know if it was the actual because she. They, That's we what give I'm asking. The quarterly thing, but it's ne it was ne has never been provided to you by us before. I think that's in regards to Sonny's question. We've never, you've never had. No, uh, we have. A okay. I believe we have. We've, we've have had the supplements before, Christy. Yeah. Are brought into us and passed out tonight. That we covered the library. Well, maybe so. from Amanda, but not from yes. the finance department. Yes. Oh well, no, not it was a fun, Amanda brought them in. You're absolutely right about that. And that's what I was asking if she could bring them in next next time, and make it easier for us. Is that last year's? year's? Yep. The, what the approach? The, the, the two hundred thirty-five thousand. Not the. Um, what? constitutes that a breakdown of those items right and so you and how they've been spent in that current year yeah okay. so we just have an idea what's going on because when I see the word appropriation that's a very ambiguous term all yeah. by itself it could be appropriation for Mike Pierce's spending account or it could be for Phil Beans right but I've, you've got alarms bookkeeping cleaning elevator they're they're there the, the there. breakdown is there when well, we determine a budget, the, we look budget. at <coughs> what was requested and what was spent on those line items. It's upside down and backwards. In other words, if you had in that group a line item for, say, elevator uh, maintenance, I'm just picking anything that might have cost you, you know, $1,500 in 2013 but only cost you $500 in 2014, we might look at that. 
as not needing to be funded as highly in 2016. We have nothing to go by. As far as what the actual expenses were, you know what you're requesting. So it's it, it, you're presenting your budget to us that way and, and all or nothing. This is what we're requesting and we'd like that amount of money, but we have nothing to base it on on what actually was spent. And quite honestly, that's the art stick we use with every department that's that, we, that comes well, in here. They come in, they ask for money, we look at what they spent and we question them on what was spent to see what they need going forward. Sometimes they need more, sometimes they don't need as much, but we don't have the benefit of those numbers. So is that something you could supply us with, with for the, especially for that last line? Where it just uh, okay. has last year's appropriations, but does not tell us what you spent. Plus plus okay, appreciate that. Plus Tim? Plus I think the uh, earlier statement that the library land is treated differently by RSA, I forgot Where? the number, but it's on the video and I'll get it from there. Two oh two A. Pardon? Well, we, there's no totals on there. 202A. I wrote it down for you. Right, thank you. <laughs> So okay. 202A is something that we need to be educated on because homework. apparently 202A says the library will be treated a certain way, which is no doubt different than all the other line items. Mm -hmm. So it's probably not uh, appropriate <laughs> to uh, compare other line items with this line item in the exact same way. She has a line item called appropriations. And it's nice if we could see the actuals that you spent under appropriations. Right. But it won't necessarily be a reflection of their budget next year because those line items, which are not line items, can change, right, based on their need as the year progresses, right. unlike other line items. So it's not exactly an apples to apples, more an apples to orange comparison. Although I think seeing the actuals for the current year is a valuable thing to see. I appreciate it seeing the last two years we were here, and I'm disappointed not to see them this year. Hmm. But I'll learn to live with it. And check. As someone who's done many budgets um, for the village district as well as personal budgets, in this day and age, to see a $787 increase, I think, is fantastic. <laughs> from and <laughs> from one year to the next, so I, I give you a lot of credit. You've done a, a great job. Uh, excellent. Great. Yep. Yes, I, I concur. Compared to the village district, your budget is outstanding. Oh, well, we'll <laughs> oh, that'll, that'll be another started. day. You I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. That'll be another. That's another day. <laughs> I look forward to it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to work over with you know. I enjoy the library as much as anybody else. I've got a couple of suggestions. They're still showing microfilming. A budget. It's a line in your budget. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. You're not Michael filming. We are. Mm -hmm. well, I yeah. are. absolutely you can are. Get out everything on the internet. I'd like to see you try to get everything on the sure. internet. <laughs> I believe me, you can. The other thing I would suggest: the large print books. <coughs> it's, a, a, it's a large. It's a fairly large appropriation. It would seem to me, you, if you bought one of the books, on and to go on the tablet and just loan the tablet out, you, you would eliminate the large print and... We do that, and no one I wants to borrow that, yeah. them, so <laughs> <laughs> they still choose okay, their large well. print books. When you got the, the tablets for the teens, mm -hmm. I actually took it out and, and I read Fifty Shades of Grey on it, which uh -oh. wasn't really a teen project. Uh-oh, little stuck. Too much information, Chuck. Too much information. Chuck, you guys, do you I two agree. work together on uh, movies for the beach? What? Okay. Okay. Um, I got one more comment. Sonny said something about the microfishing. If you read the state statutes when it comes to records, you'd be amazed at what you're supposed to do compared to what is very practical today. We all know we can keep things on disk drives and stuff like that, but microfish is required for some records. I don't know if they're required in your case. Not in our case, but it is still right. a technology that you can use without power. If you absolutely had to, you could still retrieve those records. So it's, it's a good thing to do. Okay. Well, thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Did we give you hard, hard enough time? <coughs> uh, we, we were working we're at soft, it. I we mean, were trying to. No, we were see this year. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Special degree of fish. <laughs> Thank you very much for Something joining us. Something different than a macro fish, I guess. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. On the conservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Have a little fun, Mike. Have a little fun. Yeah, I, right. I All right. And last on our list tonight is the management <coughs> budget. And that's OBS one and page one. Didn't even look at that. All the way up front. Got a budget page on that? Yeah, one and one. Page one. <laughs> page one. Mm -hmm. This will go fast. What else? Well, that's enough for now. Well, oh, don't complain. We're on one, two. Yeah, number one. Thank you for those handy. Uh, I didn't see that. Thank you. Thanks for handy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Freddie, you going to take it from there? Okay. I thought you might want to step up to the mic. I can do that. Thank you. Maybe. Might be more comfortable. To Come on down. Oh, no, those chairs are much more comfortable than these. I agree with that remark. Yeah. <laughs> these chairs, I can't walk for an hour after I sit in them. We won't keep you huh? too long. You want a plastic one there instead? No, that's fine. Okay. No such changing things at this point. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fred, you want to review it for us? Or? Uh, we put in the town manager's budget, this portion. Um, we cover the selectmen either, so I'll do that at the same time. Uh, basically, what's been there. Um, the salaries are the same as <coughs> currently approved. Um, part time wages, basically the same. Um, overtime, basically the same. Staff development, uh, we, of course, we have a new employee. Um, they, every year we end up trying to um, follow the board's direction. They have told us that we need to continue to bind books so those permanent records can be saved. And every year we are required to update the ordinances. As you can see, that's a $3,500 expense. That's something we haven't had in the previous, previous reports. Um, so the bottom line is 272, 378. That's general code book. That's that's the big book, right? That's the big, mm -hmm. the thick monster. Okay. I know that you're in the process of redoing the handbook. Actually, we're not doing that. Uh, Mr. Diener is. Uh, that was a project that he took up a number of years ago and asked the selectman for permission to do it. And they granted that permission, and he is now renewing that because, of course, things have changed over the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. But whose budget is that printing coming out of? Uh, that hasn't been appropriated by the board. It hasn't been even addressed. So I can't tell you that the answer to that question. Because they'll, have to to they'll have to approve something if, in fact, it's going to be printed. All it right, was so printed by the prison before. Okay. By the prison, you said? The yeah. state prison. The just state about, prison. Just about cost. Yeah. Okay. In between life and court. So I guess my question would be, do you anticipate that being printed for 2016, and we'll see an adjustment to the budget somewhere? I would see. Well, I'm not going to request the an ad adjustment to the budget, but um, they, I would anticipate that somewhere along the line uh, there will be a request for funds, and it may very well be that that request goes to donations. That's happened before. There's no money in this budget to print it. That's a question. I mean, I'm just. I, there is no money in this budget to print it, so we need. I, I didn't see it, so I was. I, so I, I knew it to was take money or direct it to be done from somewhere, or it would have to be come from donations. Because according to Mr. Dina, um, in requesting information from me, it sounded certain that it was being printed because wanted to get it all in and done before the end of the year. So I, I just have, wanted to make sure I didn't miss it somewhere along I the line. I have no authority from the board to spend money for that purpose at this point. Okay. All right. Um, questions going around the table. Tim? Good evening, Fred. Sir? Um, the handbook, I understand from the, I believe it was April, 
uh, that Jay Dina came in and talked yep. about the virtues of doing a new town handbook. That's the one I was just talking about. Yeah, but you forgot to mention April. Uh, and it was at that time that I believe the assistant town manager was also going to be employed in that activity, right? I, I, there's no one from staff that's working on that except Mr. Diener. Okay. So it's... We're all answering questions when they come up as to as, has, has something changed and what is it. Okay. So it's basically not a town function, officially speaking. Yeah, right? It's a donated function. Right. Does he have a protocol for asking questions, by the way? Yes, he does. Yeah, okay. the selectman told me he could. That's the protocol. That's the protocol. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing he's not doing it as an elected official. Um, staff development, 400% increase. What's driving that? We have a brand new employee. Uh, we have to do training. Uh, it's 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 a requirement. Um, we have a lot of a lot of uh, individual development that has to take place, um, and that's going to pay for that development. What's the position of this brand new employee? Uh, the assistant town manager. Town manager. Oh. Hmm. He was new last year. But he's still new. It's a continuing process. Yeah. How long will? How long was? I've, I've 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 spent 53 years trying to learn it all, and I still don't know it all. So, oh. um, he's he's brand new. He's just starting. He's switching from law enforcement to general government administration. Right. He learns quickly, uh, but there's a lot of courses and, and, and instruction that needs to take place <coughs> in order to bring that training up over a two or three year period. Is there a particular vendor he's using, or is it? We use everybody we can. Um, he's going to different association meetings. He's going to different meetings with different groups. Uh, we're using our public works department for some training. We're using other agencies for, for training as well. So it's just scattered all over the yeah, place. And he goes, he goes physically to these locations. Well, I mean, when you talk about the town, I mean, you have all these divisions, departments, of course, yeah. I know branches. it's a very broad, broad. It's very system. broad, so. Yeah, I understand that. Does any, uh, any, yeah. any of this spread include travel or... Thank you for anticipating my question, Madam Sorry, Chair. Well, yeah, <laughs> it would if travel's involved, um, and we do pay mileage if you have to use your own vehicle. I mean, uh, neither travel. Uh, Jamie and I, neither one of us put mileage in. It's very rare. We just pay for it out of our own pockets. So when you when he travels to these various courses, he's generally speaking, I, whether I travel there or he travels there, um, it's gratis to the town. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay. And supplies and expenses of 481 percent. You spoke about the printing cost is driving that. Well, supplies and expenses. Uh, if if you look at the the costs on behind that, for instance, um, we've been spending money in that area for a long time. We have to uh, pay for our own printer cartridges, for instance, for the uh, for the printers. That's that's something that uh, used to be picked up by the finance department, but now, right? now picked up by my office. Um, well, and I have to tell you, the, the stuff that we buy at, at, at cost, uh, or just above cost with bid, uh, is junk. Um, I just loaded my printer the other, uh, what, about a month ago with a brand new cartridge. It's gone. Doesn't take long. Did you well, probably I do print those, large those are generally recharged cartridges as opposed to fresh new ones. Uh, they're so yeah, yeah, they're they're taken out and recharged. By yeah, another those vendor. are generally not worth buying, in my opinion, especially well, for a high volume operation <laughs> like yours. You, you got to realize it's like being in the military. You have to realize that when you're out there in uniform, that everything you bought was purchased from the lowest bidder. Mm. Oh. It's the same thing with us. It's, we're purchased from the lowest bidder. That might be the way the defense department used to spend. I don't think they're spending that way anymore. But <laughs> I appreciate the analogy anyway. Uh, so, why are we? Previously, paying for these cartridges out of the MIS budget and now out of your budget instead. What what caused that change? Uh, the, fr the the amount of cartridges that are required, it's it's frequent and and we, somebody has to pay for it. So we've ever allocated that to the use space. Yeah, because there's a general question that that keeps coming up at the subcommittee meeting is trying to get our hands on where all these MIS expenses are, and you know some things are coming out of MIS and some things aren't, and we can't quite. I don't consider this an MIS expense. But it was once. 
Well, no, it was a finance department expense, so I think there's a big difference. Well, I thought MIS was in finance. They're a division of finance, but they weren't paying for the contract. So it was not finance MIS, it was actually was. finance they were paying for. Right. Okay, I'm, I'm clear on that now. And so uh, the actual 400% uh, on the training is actually entirely the assistant town manager, is that accurate? Oh, no, no, I think uh, we all undergo training during the course of the year. Uh, there are many new functions that come up. For instance, we just had to send our administrative assistant who does all of the um, um, training uh, on uh, licenses for truck drivers. Uh, that whole process has recently changed and we had to send her to several days worth of training uh, to uh, to go through that process we have to monitor everybody's license now not only that we have to monitor the fact that they have doctor certificates now which is required whether or not they have to have one for municipal government you can't have a license without having one and we can't employ them without having evidence the license has been taken care of and the, the examination has been taken care of we don't pay for that but we still have to monitor that entire process and have to be trained how to do it as a function of employing them. It's a function, it's a federal function of employing them. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, a line item that's divided by three people, yourself, the assistant time manager, and the administrative assistant? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Fred. I have no more questions. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Um, before I get screamed at, I'm going to ask just for a yes or no answer. Will the administrative assistant be in the default budget this year? Administrative assistance, a full-time employee. So it will. By law, it has to be. Okay, that's all. Thank yep. you. Any other questions? Jerry? Yeah, I, I, Fred, where are we on the, uh, what, you know, when we update the ordinances? Are we caught up to that? Or? Yes, we are. We are. We're up to last year, last town meeting. Um, we were a couple, two, three years behind. We were years. four years behind. Yeah. Yeah, because we're no the, money was appropriated for it. And actually, we end up spending something in the order of ten thousand dollars to catch up so who does this work that's done by myself the assistant town manager and the administrative assistant she coordinates the material to go out okay. we all work on putting it together and, and that's good because it. you know sometimes i go online and it's good to see fresh dates and i have seen them up late yeah. and i was looking up the ethics policies and things of that nature and it was so, all fresh dates there it's so. important to keep it up to date yeah well, I'm happy to see you. And periodically we amend a lot of those things because of changes in state and federal statutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really don't have any other comments. I mean, this is just, you know, I think we're just basically driven by only, salaries. <laughs> can only beat it up so far. Right. All right. Fred, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank you, sir. Minutes. We have a pile of minutes, but I don't know that everybody's had time to really look at them because we've been rolling them out so quickly and they're long. Do you want more time? Yes, please. To December 1st? Thank you. I'm indifferent on the matter. Yeah. All right. December 1st, drop that date on those. All the minutes outstanding. I think we've got three of them. Yeah. By then we'll have four. Um, be prepared on those. Please bring copies and any changes already done so we can just do them. In the meantime, the minutes will be posted as drafts. All, Thank you. All those questions. Motion Our next, to adjourn? Not yet. No, yeah. Our next meeting is December 1st. Does anybody have any parting comments before Mr. LeBranch moves to adjourn? I have a, quite, I have a question. Okay. Our consensus vote tonight, which I thought was very appropriate, is that going to be funneled directly to them or did they catch it while they were sitting here? I gave them a copy. So it's the matter, the communications protocol has been followed then. No, she we actually might. needs to send uh, some communication yeah. there. Just asking, you're going to take care of that, Madam Chairman. Yes, Thank you've you given much. me permission tonight only. to do that as a committee. Thank you. Mr. LeBranch. No, Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, at 8.55. Thank you. Thank you, Channel 22. Good to see you, Chuck. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you.